Hi, and welcome to the Finance Hour. My name is Wayne Randall. I have the pleasure of introducing a woman that's overcome many challenges and has accomplished many others. She's a mother, college graduate, choir songstress, and she's an author. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Sharia Young. How are you doing, Sharia? I am doing well, and yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm managing, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right to what people probably really want to know. How did you come about the inspiration for your book, and what's the name of it? I have two books. The first one is called God Ain't Done With Me Yet, Uniquely Blessed. I came about writing this book back in July, when the Lord told me to use the scripture, Habakkuk 2.2, write the vision and make it plain. He said that I needed to break the silence and expose the things that had happened in my life so that others may be blessed. The second book is I Decided to Make Jesus My Choice, Praise, and Devotion. And that book is a scriptural book that has prayers and scripture to give you wisdom, and encouragement as you go throughout your day. Well, we all need that, don't we? Because day-to-day -day life is challenging enough. And, I mean, for someone like yourself, it's even probably even more challenging. You know, you're, you're quite an inspiration, and this is why we're doing this, because we want to, we want to inspire other people to push on and press on to try to achieve as many things that they can in life, despite what's in the front of you. So you're a college grad. What did you major at? Was it a composition, or did you go to school to be a writer? Or No, I actually majored in human services with a concentration okay. in social work for my bachelor's degree and human services with a concentration in rehabilitation with my master's. That's great accomplishment. It seemed like you always had that thirst of wanting to work with people because when you said human services, you know, I, I know a lot about this field, and yes. this is a field that has a lot to do with helping people. Yes. It's, it's all about helping people and helping people have a better quality of life. That's true. And so if I could go back to God ain't done with me yet, uniquely blessed, and just give you a synopsis of it, um, it talks about the amazing story concerning the miracle baby. Not only will you mm -hmm. laugh and cry, you will be educated, motivated, encouraged, and inspired. Uniquely blessed in my own way, I am set apart by God. His hands are on me for a specific purpose. Sharia, a.k.a. Uniquely Blessed One, has lost her sight, but she has not lost her love of life. She has achieved many feats, including several college degrees, raising a son as a single mother, a choral songstress, and now an author. God Ain't Done With Me Yet, Uniquely Blessed, was written as a testimony so that others may be inspired, motivated, educated, and encouraged. Well, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm inspired by just hearing what you said, and I mean just the title alone, God is not done with you yet. For anybody that's a believer, we can equate to what that really means because we're all works in progress. I, I Absolutely. would like to say that we really are. And we're still striving to be the best that we can be ourselves. Now, um, I heard through good authority that you were invited to the uh, Authors and Editors uh, event for the National Black Unity News. How was that? 
that was an amazing event. It was awesome. There were a lot of people, delicious food. Everyone introduced themselves and talked a little bit about their book and their editing experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, they also I, I, talked I, about a homeless organization called God's Given Hand who believes in feeding the hungry, giving back to the community, providing drinks to the thirsty. Yes, I've heard about that organization and they're doing wonderful work. And that organization is again? God's Given Hand, who was founded by my phenomenal uncle Rico. Yes, I've had the pleasure of meeting him. He is a dynamic gentleman. And, you know, that's, that's the, that is really what this is about, that we're all in a circle where we get a chance to meet a lot of these people doing a great work in the community and touching lives of people here and abroad. So that's, so that's why we're so glad to have you in the showcase. And I'm sure that your story is one that's going to touch the lives of many people. So from here, where, what do you want to achieve next, Sharia? Do you have your sights on? I want to become a motivational speaker. And I just mm -hmm. want to encourage others so that they may be blessed from the experiences that I went through. Because no one knows your story like you know your story, and no one knows your pain like you know your pain. But the positive thing in it all is that you go through it and you're able to move forward and become your vibrant self. So I just want others to be blessed. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that. See, I already understand that you have a giving heart because you're already giving. You're putting energy out, so energy is going to come back to you. See? Mm -hmm. And if a person's hand is open, they can always receive. So you're, al you're already giving anyway. And that's, that's really great. You know, I'm, I want to say this much. Oh, let's get back to your book. How will the public be able to get any one of these books of yours? Where are they at? They are on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all you have to do is type in my name, Sharia, S-H-E-R-R-I-A, Young. Or you can type in the titles of the book in the search bar, God Ain't Done With Me Yet, Uniquely Blessed, and... I decided to make Jesus my choice, praise, and devotion. That, that sounds great. That, that, that actually sounds great. Do you have someone that's managing or you have like a manager or agent or somebody that's kind of helping you with your career and the things that you're doing? I understand, you know, you did show up at that event yesterday, so... You're well connected. You're in a network, correct? Absolutely. All I know is network, 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 and I learned that from my human services director from my grad program. He taught us to use our resources, and once we network with someone that is useful, we need to lock their numbers in. So I took it and ran with it. I actually managed everything on my own until okay. um, I get to the point of, of elevation. Well, that's good. I mean, you know, sometimes being self-motivated can be very difficult for people, you know, to motivate your own self, not even talking about trying to motivate somebody else. But I want to know, will you come back and join us again? Absolutely. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be able to um, be a part of your finance hour, and I would love to come back again. So in closing, how will people be able to get in touch with you if they want to reach out to you, um, send you an email, or how can, how can they do you that? You can reach me via Facebook. You can type in my name, Sharia Young, 
You can inbox me through Facebook. You can also email me at uniquelyblessed1, the number one, at outlook.com. You can also contact me at 443-865-3513. Well, I'm sure all those who want to get in touch with you have made a note of that record. And I want to tell you, thank you for your time, Sharia. It's always been a pleasure. And I look forward to actually talking and seeing you again, okay? All right, and thank you so much for having me. Okay. You'll be back again soon, okay? You take care. And all right. We'll talk to you again soon, all right? Okay. All right, God bless you. God bless you too. Sharia Young, motivation speaker, songstress, and author of the book, God is Not Done With Me Yet Uniquely Blessed. She believes in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, it says to write the vision make it plain. As she prayed to God as he led her to write her book because she wanted to share her testimony so that others may be blessed, she thanks God that her book was published in September 2018. She is truly proud of this wonderful accomplishment that she has achieved and she asks that you read her book The Amazing Story About the Incredible Miracle Baby You Would Life Be Motivated, Educated and Provided with Words of Inspiration. The book can be purchased at Amazon.com for those who have already purchased the book. She thanks you so much for your support. She loves each and every one of you so very much. Be blessed. Need a financial planner? Then contact our professional and friendly team to learn more about our range of custom and tailored services designed to suit your exact needs. Every one of our professionals has acquired years of experience, which ensures you get the very best. Our experienced staff are waiting to hear from you and to answer any specific questions that you may have on how we can meet your needs. Just ask for a consultation and let us prove our commitment to you as we promise to maintain the highest level of quality and commitment. Your satisfaction is our primary concern, so please, don't hesitate to get in contact with us and let us show you all the great options we have. Hi, and welcome to the Finance Hour. I'm your host, Wayne Randall. My next guest is the co-founder of God's Given Hands, a faith-based organization that's been around for five and a half years and they've formed a collective effort going into the neighborhoods of feeding the hungry and the homeless by providing hot meals, clothing, and the Word of God. Let me introduce Anthony Gibson Crawley. How are you doing this evening, Anthony? Hey, Wayne. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing much better now. That's good. <laughs> we seem to manage to work out everything we wanted to work out the last few days, you know that, so we won't even get into what that was about. <laughs> I want to just bring up a point because some people have this misconception about God's giving hands. Okay. Is it a church, Anthony? Actually, no, it's not a church. As you said in the intro, it's a family-based organization um, founded on Christian beliefs, as a matter of fact. So the organization was actually founded through a conversation between my brothers and sisters and I, and a family friend, you know, just wanting to do more for the community. And out of that brainstorming, we came up with God's giving hands. So, so that's, 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 a, that's great. It's a, it seems to be something that's a, turned out to be a great body of work. And other people have gravitated towards this movement, correct? Yes, you're absolutely correct. So we have individuals such as yourself that come down and assist us with volunteering and passing yeah. out meals and clothing and, and so forth and so on and so forth. We've got partner organizations that assist us through um, donations. Um, we've got youth groups that actually come out. So a, a basketball team in particular from Harford County, the Sharks, and then there's an actual group of young men, um, uh, mentees, that actually come and assist as well. So members of the community may just happen to see us out and about and decide to come over and talk, find out what we're all about, and end up helping us, you know. So that that's a blessing from God. Yes, it is. And, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that I come because I don't want people to think I just sit behind this desk and talk. <laughs> but, I mean, 
I do believe in uh, becoming part of Boots on the Ground because the need is there and the harvest is much, as you know, they say the workers are few. Exactly. exactly. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a movement, and I've been there to experience it. And, and with that, with you stating that, I know it's quite an undertaking to put something like that together. How often are the feedings, how often do they take place in the a, in a course of a month? So actually during the course of the month, we actually have two feedings. Mm -hmm. So we do a standard feeding every third Sunday, and that takes place under the Fallsway Bridge and right <clears throat> adjacent to the main post office on Fayette Street. Um, and, and that feeding is every third Sunday. And then we also have a feeding with the Langston Hughes Community Center, and that's every Monday. Now, the Langston Hughes uh, Community Center, that is now an, a new extension of God's Given Hands, correct? Yes. So we've only been doing that for about six months or so. Okay. Um, so we just recently started doing that. And, again, that particular feeding is every Monday afternoon. And now that's in a totally different demographic. That's in a different area. The other feeding is downtown near the prison, correct? Yes, that's correct. And Langston Hughes is uptown. That it, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So you know, you guys are you know spreading yourself out to actually help more people, which yes. is which is a great thing because if I if I'm correct, Langston Hughes is somewhere near back in the direction there, Ricestown Road or something like that. Right, it's Arbutus Avenue. Mm -hmm. So 5011 Arbutus Avenue. Yeah. It, it all, it sounds, it sounds great, I'm telling you. You know, I've, I've heard, I have it on good authority that you have, you guys have something to add to your list of accolades. You were awarded for uh, this diligent work is being done in the community. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Anthony? Yes. So we actually just received a couple of awards, as a matter of fact, one from the mayor's office uh, and then another from Channel 45. Um, so the work that we do has actually gotten noticed. Um, and, and, again, that is another blessing to, one, see uh, political figures who have actually taken notice that individuals or groups such as ours is actually out there trying to make a difference within the community, you know. Yeah. So, so that that again, like I said, and, and I'll continue to say it is a huge blessing. You know, you you made a good point to say that you know the presence has been well received, and now, like you said, political figures and actually national networks know what's going on. Yes. You know, yes. with that said, Anthony, I want to uh, add something to the body of this commentary. So let me open up this slide, and maybe you can walk us through what's going on. This is something that goes on with one of the feeding. Sure. Okay. Can you so, see that slide, Anthony? Yes, I can. So this looks like a typical day on one of those Sundays, correct? Yes, that's right. So this is the Sunday feeding, and we're actually near the Fallsway Bridge, as a matter of fact. So okay. what we basically do is we get there around 2 in the afternoon to set up and try to start the feedings around 3. So what we do is we come down. We, we are in the same spot all the time. Um, we set our tables up. We set up the food. We set up the snacks the clothing, uh, the toiletries, whatever we have to um, pass out to the community for that particular feeding. Mm -hmm. um, before we get started, we generally have prayer with the individuals in line um, just to, again, thank God for the blessings that we're able to pass on, um, to give thanks for the food that we're uh, uh, giving to the, the members of the community, mm -hmm. um, just to uh, usher in a, a great spirit for that particular time that we're there. Yes. You know, um, some of the great things in talking to the individuals that we serve there, you know, oftentimes want to have somebody to come over and, and have prayer with them or just in conversation. You know, one of the 
the greater things um, in actually doing this and, and being involved with those particular individuals, you know, once you come down, just the gratitude that people yeah. show, you know, wanting to help out, you know, ensuring that the area is clean, you know, they help us set up, they help us break down, you know, individuals who um, help us serve. So it, it's just a great time, a great time of fellowship. Yeah, I can see. It seems like it's very well received. In this slide here, Anthony, I mean, approximately how many people you think show up on, on these Sundays? It looks like a multitude of people here to me. Yeah, we we actually serve anywhere from 300, maybe to 350 individuals, um, and particularly down in the Fallsway area. And like I said, we do two yeah. sections. Yeah. So we, we start, start out by the bridge, and then we, we're there for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, and then we migrate over to the post office. Um, okay. and serve individuals there. So roughly, I would say anywhere from 300 to 350. Well, that line itself, that line spoke for itself, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, that line looked like it went all the way down the block. And and it does, as a matter of fact. It really does. Um, and and it, 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 it it's a testimony to the amount of individuals that are out there actually suffering from homelessness you know, or don't have the opportunity to have a hot meal, um, yeah. you know. So so that is a visual where you can put faces to the actual, again, like you said, commentary of yeah. what's going on or what's taking place. And it seems like I'm sure the people, they know you're coming, so they become dependent, and they probably know when you're coming. Yes, 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 they do. Um and, and again, it, it's great because not just God's giving hands, but you have other entities or organizations that come down and, and assist throughout the week, you know. So, so individuals are being serviced on a continuous basis, continuing basis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, more work needs to be done. We actually need to figure out a way where we can eradicate ho the homeless population, you know. I mean, our – goal is just that, to be able to provide housing for these individuals, you know, medical care, um, the whole kit and caboodle, not just one day a week, but a, a solution, you know, yeah, yeah. can actually help people get back on their feet and, and, yeah. and come back to being proactive members of the community. I definitely get what you're saying because that leads me to my next question as to what is the projection for what God gets, what God's given hand wants to do, let's say, now in the next year, year and a half or so? So in the next year, year and a half, I think our vision would be, one, we'd actually like to be able to acquire um, like a mobile food truck, a food service truck. Okay. Because it would allow us to go throughout the city as opposed to isolated regional areas, you know. Okay. Um, and saying that the ability to be able to service more than twice a month. So with the mobile ability, I think we could be able to, to service the community maybe up to four or five times a week, as a matter of fact. I, whether I, could, be, I could see that happening. Yeah, yeah, whether it be just lunch or dinner or a combination of both. You know, long-term goal, as I said, would be to find some type of way to assist individuals from living away from the street, to put them into their own residential quarters, whether it be a permanent home, um, a long-term shelter, or, you know, multiple uh, residents in, in a dwelling or something. But ultimately, that is our goal. Our goal is to be able to to eradicate homelessness. Yes. I, I can see a lot of that possibly being done. I mean, are you partnering with maybe the city of Baltimore programs or other entities that could possibly aid with the vision, like you said? Because we know homelessness, you know, this is a serious thing. Meals are one thing, but life has takes so many facets you need. 
housing, you need a little education, you you need some skills and some direction that that to help a person on. Right. It, mm -hmm. it, it, and what God's, yeah, and what God's giving hands is doing, I mean, you're right at the first step. Mm -hmm. So to go from here would be even even better. So I, I see the vision, I see it. I've yeah. it. So you kind of, you guys have some people in mind, or you've been approached. So we've actually uh, not necessarily been approached. So we've had individuals like Christina Flowers, okay. who actually works with you know trying to eradicate homelessness as well. So there, she's one individual who we've met while we've been out feeding, and we've been in talk, the partnership, and do some things. And there are other individuals that we've run across that we've sort of talked to as well. Um, in terms of the political arena, I think because we're starting to be recognized, um, we may have, you know, the Lord may have opened a door for us there. Um, we've not had anything come to fruition as yet. Okay. But, um, you know, we're hopeful, we're prayerful, and I think that it's going to happen very soon. Um, as, it, as it stands now, you know, for the most part, we are self-funded, so um, we have donations that come in, uh, individuals who either donate money, they may donate clothing, may donate food, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, again, we've been doing it for five and a half years, and, and we have been blessed to be able to come up with the monies needed in order to uh, move forward. So, Well, on that same note, Anthony, anyone seeing this? this podcast and this showcase tell them how can they donate or become part of boots on the ground if they want to get involved sure so boots on the ground um, what i'd like to say um first of all so my brother Chris, rico christopher carley is our primary coordinator extraordinaire so if yeah. you come down to the feedings basically you will see him you know and just tell him that you're interested in joining the group and we'll make it happen. It's, it's just that simple. Um, if you want to reach us by mail, we have a P.O. box, and it's P.O. box 18672, Baltimore, Maryland, 21216. Um, okay. We accept donations through that P.O. box as well. Uh, we have a GoFundMe page, and that's GoFundMe.com, uh, gods-giving-hands-baltimore-maryland. Um, we've actually got uh, Facebook, Instagram, and we have a email box, um, which is Gmail, and it's God's Giving Hands at gmail.com. So if you want to email us, you're very welcome to email us as well. Um, the Facebook is God's Giving Hands at My God's Giving Hands. Twitter is God's Giving Hands at Hands God's Giving, and Instagram is God's Giving Hands at God's Dash Giving Dash Hands. So we've got several ways to contact yeah. you. <laughs> I like that. You know, and um, it's uh, very impressive, but I would like to say that anybody hearing this or seeing this, please make a note of all the information that Mr. Anthony gave. Yes. Because this organization could use all of your help. So if you can't physically come, we understand. Because the organization is out there winter, spring, summer, and fall, and rain. They come. Yeah. So, so we your donation can help. So if you can't be there physically, dollars do help because we know money is nothing but a tool. But Mr. Anthony, that's about all the time we have. But we like to know one thing. The finance out, we like to know where you come back and visit us again. And we like to see where things are going at with God's given hand. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime that you guys extend that invitation, we're there. We are there. We, we sure will do that. And thank you for taking your time and coming on. And I appreciate it and appreciate you as well. So from God's giving hands, I'd like you to know how gratified that we are that you believe in our cause. And for all the assistance that you yourself give us as well as our other volunteers, we could not – we don't have words enough to express the thanks. You know, so, again, we appreciate all that you do. And uh, God bless you. you. <laughs> I'm receiving that. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys back out on the field when I come or when we connect here again. 
Have a good evening, and I'm going to sign you off. All right. Thank you. We appreciate you, Wayne. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. God's giving hands, may the work they are doing speak for them. We all have challenges in life some more than others. Some are self-inflicted some are forced upon us and some are circumstances beyond our control. Given it will be given unto you. It is written when you help others you are helping yourself. The purpose of human life is to serve, and to show compassion and the will to help others. We can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. Give help rather than advice. No one has ever become poor by giving. We need volunteers and your support. No gift or donation is too small or too great.